Derek. All right, well, you know, we have uh, several really great columnists. You know this, Derek. We have several great columnists that contribute to Quality Digest on a regular basis. But our next guest is really one of our personal favorites. His topic is management, and he uses his training and experience in psychology to help managers achieve significantly improved outcomes for themselves or organizations and their employees too. Uh, Kelly Graves is the CEO of Internal Business Solutions and is the author of the book, The Management and Employee Development Review, which is available now from Productivity Press. His latest column, Business Counseling and the Three-Day Rule, appeared in the September 12th issue of the Quality Digest newsletter. So Kelly Graves, welcome back to Quality Digest Live. Great to be here with uh, you guys. How are you? All right, And we, well. should, we should clarify, this is the three-day rule, not the five-second rule. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Dirk, Dirk is an yeah, expert yeah. At, the, at the ladder. Five seconds? Five minutes, whatever. Whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever, whatever. But Just you know, soon. you know, I think this column, I, it, it kind of deals with some some tougher stuff uh, than than all your columns are kind of very forward in terms of, of what managers need to do. Mm -hmm. This one deals with some some rather difficult stuff because it deals with with uh, kind of the natural human fear, the desire to avoid confrontation, right. and and th from that stems if you don't deal with confrontation well as a manager, you can't manage your employees properly, and some employees need to be quite frankly, manage more than others. And, and if you, somebody does need help and needs you to help manage them a little bit more, you need to confront them, right? So right. how does a manager overcome that, that reluctance? I don't know if they ever overcome it. Um, I've been doing this for two decades, and still when I go in and work with a, a manager to sit with an employee, there's always a sense of um, foreboding. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you always get that. What you get though is the more you do it and practice it and have those difficult conversations, you get better at them and you realize that the fear of fear is actually worse than the actual outcome. And especially with the three day rule, if you know what's going to happen ahead of time, then you know the, the steps to the game. Well talk, talk about that. So the three day rule, this is mm -hmm. an interesting one because you talk about this right. within the framework of, of a conversation on a Friday okay. that may happen where a, a, a employee might be might have one of these difficult conversations with the manager, manager with the employee. So how does that three-day rule roll out after that initial conversation? You know, I ran into this about 15 years ago and I noticed these patterns as I would have conversations with managers and employees, I kept noticing this pattern. And basically how the three-day rule works is that when you sit down and have a, a serious conversation with an employee, this is after you've had two or three you know, buildups and you know, this is what you need to work on, what do I need to work on as a manager, and they're just not getting it. And so this is that last ditch effort where you really have to sit down and, and have a serious conversation about, um, you know what, you really need to, to take hold of what we're, what we're trying to get here or your job's in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, this is the end of the line. Um, and what I noticed is that people would get upset and so the first one is they're gonna get upset and they're gonna quit within that three days. Mm -hmm. They're just gonna be upset. They might quit at the moment or on Monday morning or Tuesday, they're gonna say, I'm done. The second one is they're gonna get upset and they're gonna do a 180 degree turnaround. And that's, the, that's what I wrote about in the article mm -hmm. is the, the one we saved her. I mean, mm -hmm. she was on her way out. The, the owner wanted to get rid of her. And I said, well, let's use this as practice. You know, I mean, you're gonna terminate her anyway. Right. Let's, let's try this out. And, and we saved a woman's job. She's still there, mm -hmm. you know, all these years later. Um, the third one, and this is a little bit harder, harder to decipher, is that the employee will get mad for three days. That's the common theme is they're, you know, they're, <laughs> their ego's hurt. Yeah, you know, sure. they're gonna get hurt. Um, and they come back, they want their job, but then they go underground and they sabotage. And this is the one that you've really got to be careful for because they're painting the face that I want to be part of the team, but they're actually sabotaging both themselves and the organization. Are they aware that they're doing that? Some are, some aren't. Mm -hmm. um, and the ones that aren't, they don't realize to the degree that they're doing it. But they do know that they have animosity and that they are attacking the company. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to know, am I helping or am I hurting? Yeah. You know, and so they know that they're hurting, but it's driven out of you know, ego and, and all the other things that come into play there. Mm -hmm. And so what they do is they end up going underground, I call it, and really negatively impacting the grapevine. 
and you know talking bad about the manager talking bad about the company and this is where the manager um, has to be very aware of what's going on and nip that in the bud and if you have an employee um, what I found is if you have an employee that you think might go in that direction the best thing that you can do is tell them about the three-day rule ahead of time when you're having that difficult conversation um, say uh, you know what, what I found is one of three things are going to happen in the next three or four days. You're going to do number one, you're going to do number two, or you're going to do number three. If you end up doing number three, I'm going to know about it and then I'll have to terminate you. And that is your best bet in terms of deflating them because it catches them before they even catch themselves because they're just going to go through the mad, you know, they're just angry at that point. But on Monday or Tuesday when they come back to work, they're realizing that, wait a minute, I'm going through these phases and the manager knew four days ago, three days ago, that I was going to go through these phases. They're three days ahead of me, which, which really puts the manager at, at a good advantage because what ultimately we're trying to do is we're trying to save that employee from themselves at that point. We don't want their ego to get involved. We want to save them. I mean, ultimately, we, we want to. We've invested in them. Um, and so that's a good way to put them in what's called a therapeutic double bind. You, you let them know what's going to happen before it happens, and then they're caught. Whatever they do, you're already there waiting. And so it, you, can, you can diffuse the situation that way. So, I mean, how does... That's, the, that's what happens after a, a, right. a manager's had this. Mm -hmm. What is the best way to have... The com what, what kind of conversation does the manager have with this person that really sets them up to succeed mm -hmm. as opposed to <laughs> as opposed to failing? Right, right. right. It's interesting. When a manager sits down to talk with me and says, gosh, I've got an a problem with this employee, and they tell me about it, I, I often 90% of the time say, just say that. Why don't you just have an honest conversation <laughs> right, 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 with the employee? Right. Right. Say, you know what? I've you know, we've, we've gone through this process, um, we've done some training, we've done some coaching. Um, you know, I'll be the first to admit that, you know, maybe I haven't addressed this as quickly or as firmly as I should have. Um, and, and acknowledge your part in it, because that levels the, the playing field. And that in, in all my theories and, and when you read in the book, you'll notice that it's um, about not only coaching the employee, but the manager being coached. You know, in this situation, it was the manager's fault mm -hmm. that they didn't address the situation early enough. And we know just in, in basic problem solving, the earlier you can catch a problem, the smaller it is and the easier it is to work with. So, and so that's where a person really has to overcome their own fear and face that dragon just a little bit early. And it doesn't have to be, I'm going to go from nice to mean. If you wait too long, you go from nice to mean. You get angry. Instead of, let's just have a conversation. Right. You know, and... Well, if, if, if as a manager, if, if, it seems to me that if part of what I'm going to say is like, look, we're in this situation right now because I, as a manager, you know, look, I kind of screwed up. Mm -hmm. that, that almost says that you would have to restart the conversation because it, seemed, it would seem to be funny to me to say, okay, I realize the reason that part of the reason we're here is mm -hmm. because uh, as a manager I screwed up, but you're fired. <laughs> right. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's right. almost like, yeah, I screwed up, so let me, let me start again mm -hmm. and let's lay things out more clearly what I expect of you. Right. And if that doesn't happen, then you're fired. <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Because, you know, again, we are dealing with, you know, ultimately we're dealing, we want to deal with this earlier. But if it does come to that, you want to restart the conversation as, as best you can given yeah. the circumstances. And it's perfectly reasonable to say, you know, I've got a part to play in this as well. I know there might be HR directors out there, you know, screaming, screaming at me right at now. You, right, right. But, <laughs> Don't say it. but, I believe, I, I believe in honesty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you're being true and you're being honest with that employee and you're being honest with yourself, that, that is the best, that's the best medicine. And you're going to have the best chance of getting across to that employee when you're being true and honest with them. They're going to know that they're, you're not pulling their leg. You're not trying to pull a fast one because that's what upsets employees the most is, is when you know, they know what's, what's right or wrong or they know what's going on in the company and management is lying to them. Right, right. And, and they know it. And, and then they're like, well, you've lied to me here, 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 and I can't even trust you. And it's like, finally, we're having an honest conversation. Right, right. Great. 
And you know, you, let's continue this. And if you don't do that, if you do it the other way, that's when you run into some trouble. And that's when right. you maybe run into some trouble legally as well if you don't right. do it the right way. And all of a sudden you just bang, just like you say, get angry and you turn and you say something maybe you shouldn't have said right. in that conversation. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden maybe you do have a legal problem. Right. So if you don't mm -hmm. determinate, if, if it is necessary and you have to do that, mm -hmm. this way also protects you a little bit more as well because you, you can show that you did this in the right way. Right, and you know, obviously documentation, Document, yeah. but you know, that's a whole other topic. But um, yeah, the, the main point that I want to get across is oftentimes when employees are terminated, yes, their actions got them terminated, but it was, you know, three or 10 steps ahead of that where maybe they weren't trained properly, they weren't, weren't coached thoroughly enough. We didn't have enough conversation. I worked with a manager here six months ago who was a, was a really good manager, but I had to tell him, look, you need to talk more frequently to your employees and you need to turn up the heat sooner. Mm -hmm. If because he, he was so nice yeah. that it would get to that point mm -hmm. where he he had late, talked yeah. he had talked with them, but he really didn't give it the um, the intensity that it was needed, and he didn't need to go from zero to a hundred. He just needed to go from zero to fifty, mm -hmm. you know. And then the next conversation, sixty or eighty, you know. And then we you know we keep ratcheting it up. And I, I tell people, you know, you've got a dial. Use that dial. You don't have to go from you know it's like a gas pedal. You don't go from zero to a hundred. You know, use that, use it sparingly, but you know, um, when it comes time to have an, an honest conversation with an employee, you need to give it the, um, I guess, the, the depth that it requires, yeah. you know, to really get the point across. And that that person deserves to. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Kelly Graves, thanks for joining us again. It's always a quick 10 minutes with you on these it segments. Is. <laughs> it flies. It goes like that, but thanks for being here. And uh, Kelly writes for us regularly, so we'll bring yep. Kelly back on the show maybe next month or, or soon after that. All right, thanks, Kelly. Yeah.